This particular video is a bit more personal in nature. It's about a word faith preacher by the name of Dana Muldoon, uh, the ministry by her name, Dana Muldoon Ministries, based in, I believe, Brooklyn, New York. Um, said so this is a bit more personal. If I get over emotional or maybe let an expletive fly, you're just going to have to forgive me. You'll know why towards the end of this video. I will be quoting from her letter. I have three of them, and I'll do, be doing three videos so far. Um, what she did, in her words, is beyond description. You're just going to have to see. But I want you to pay close attention to what she says, because it will have a lot of meaning after I'm done. Did you notice the first thing? I don't said I'm not. Sure, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, I don't have HD or anything, but right there in the envelope, you can see, it says private and personal. This is a fax of the envelope. Um, I still have the actual envelope. These are the actual letters that were sent. Right here, this you can probably make. You can make this out. Personal and confidential. So. Right on the front, it says personal and confidential in the envelope. And then at the beginning of the letter, personal and confidential in big black letters. It then uses my grandmother's name. Her name's Rachel. I want you to notice what she says. Rachel, I feel God's gifts working in me now as I write to you this anointed letter of prophecy. She then goes on to state in the letter about how, you know, People have rough times and, and all that sort of thing, but the devil's holding you back. She says these are the tools that the devil tries to use to keep you from trusting in God. You know, pain, lack, whatever. She then goes on to say this. I sense in the spirit that there is a situation that you are dealing with that is still trying to keep you from the fulfillment of God's promise of blessing in your life. Now, so far we have the Osteen thing. Okay? But this goes further in Osteen, as, you'll, as you're going to see. She goes on to mention that she see, Rachel, I see you in this faith vision, whatever a faith vision is. Um, but, once again, she goes on to state this. I believe since your destiny is linked with my destiny, I can tell you that abundance, good health, overflowing prosperity blessings are ready to be seized by you. So, you get the idea so far. She has stated that she has received that the gift of prophecy is working in her. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, as I just quoted to you, she feels like the Lord's leading her to write this. And she says, since the destinies are linked, that, you know, for my grandmother, abundant prosperity is coming. Okay. She then goes on to give the illustration of Abraham and Isaac. And God tells Abraham to sacrifice his only son Isaac, only at the last second to provide a sacrifice in the place of Isaac. She uses that illustration. Uh, I think you can, based on what she said so far, God's going to provide this last minute miracle for my grandmother. But the way she constructs, keep in mind what I've quoted to you so far, she then structures it, the letter, as if she's writing the letter and she's, you know, we're typing, whatever, and God interrupts to give her this word. And she states, I want you to see it. Uh, let's see. I don't know if you can see it right there. Just a minute. Yeah, it's right up there. Get turned around here. Right there. Just a minute. She says, God is giving me this prophetic word for you. It's as if she's typing this up and God interrupts. Here's a word. This is what it says. Yes, my child, Rachel, think not of the disappointments of the past, the times when you thought you were near a breakthrough, only to be disappointed. My spirit is bringing you to the place of victory by putting Jehovah Jireh faith deep in thy spirit. Listen and obey the word of my prophet this day, and you shall prosper, saith the Lord. So she goes from her words to God's words. Never mind the, how dangerous this is. And you are not going to believe what she says later on about 
this letter and those words. But this isn't really about theology. I think it would be very clear the theological problems with this. We'll continue. But once again, notice the personal nature of this letter. She used my grandmother's name, says it's personal and private on the envelope, personal and confidential on page one, and then somehow God interrupts her to give her this uh, personal word that I just quoted to you. Um, she quotes, and she then uses the illustration from Ecclesiastes 4.12. I didn't, I don't, I didn't actually get this in the envelope, um, but three chords, and I guess the idea is you have three chords and then you weave them together and they, they become an unbreakable bond. Keep that in mind, by the way, the three chord thing. And then, then woven together for an unbreakable bond. That's a Trinity illustration later on. Um, she then, this is, a, this is a rabbit trail, but this quote is so amazing, I wanted you to see it. Here it is. I tell you, Rachel, Jehovah Jireh faith is the greatest force, the greatest power ever placed in the hands of men. When that unlimited power is released, the Lord will provide your ram in the thicket. I don't know about you, okay, geeky reference coming here. I don't know about you, but all I got was, use the force, Luke. And Luke, you know, raising his hands, and he's raising the Jedi fighter or whatever it was there with Yoda in the swamp. Um, I know, geeky sci-fi reference, although I'm not a sci-fi fan, but that's what popped into my head. Use the force, Luke. Um, but... That's not even biblical. It's a rabbit trail, but I just wanted you to see that. Going on to page three now, by the way. She states in page three, let's see if you can see it. It will work now. A little fuzzy, but you see the exclamation mark? She, she underlines it in blue, big black letters. This is going to work. Okay? She then goes on to say, she little silliness going on, so to speak, and this ends up going into money. Um, but I want you to see something. Once again, I think it'll be a little fuzzy. Okay? I'll show it to you, but I'll quote it to you as well. Uh, let's see. Yeah, can't see it. It's still too fuzzy. But she states this. Now follow these inspired instructions for the use of this anointed packet. I'm going to say this word a number of times so that you get the gravity of it. It's storming here, by the way. <clears throat> I don't know if you hear the thunder, but, um, and the rain. Inspired. Inspired, 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 inspired. This letter, I don't have my Bible with me. I should have grabbed one. It would have been a good illustration, but, uh, yeah, it's too far to reach. This letter is on par with Holy Scripture. She calls her words inspired. Yeah. Now, review for a second. All right? All that I've quoted to you so far, keep in mind, let's review real quick. Personal and private on the envelope. Personal and confidential on page one. Then she, she states in the very first sentence that God's gift of prophecy is working in her. She states in the third paragraph, I believe it's the third paragraph, isn't it? Yeah, one, two, yeah. That in the third paragraph that she says, Rachel, God's, you know, I feel led to do this. And then she structured the letter so that on page two, as I showed you, once again, in the just a minute section right over here, God interrupts her to give her this personal word of which she quotes it as if it's really God. Wow. She then goes on to say that this is inspired and also in big black letters underlined, it will work. My grandmother is going to get her miracle. A personal word from God to Pastor Dana, of which she calls inspired revelation. Now, what's the problem with this? 
besides the obvious theological issues here. What's the problem? Like I said, the theological issues are many and serious. But this is a bit more personal matter. You see, at the time that Pastor Dana received this revelation, my grandmother was dead. She had already passed and gone home to actually be with the Lord. Speechless at the moment. I just think about that for a minute. She claims to have received inspired revelation, her words, remember, from God, uh, that my grandmother, according to her use of, of uh, Genesis, I think it was 22, Abraham and Isaac, yeah, Abraham and Isaac, Genesis 22, you're going to get that last second miracle. It will work because it's inspired revelation. She was already dead. She had died of cancer. That's the point of this video. Two logical conclusions. Well, let me throw out an objection here. Okay? Because I've heard this from Word Faith preachers many times. Throw out an objection. This is a general revelation. It's just meant for everybody, and you just sort of claim it. Well, then why'd you structure it personally? That's why I kept emphasizing the first 11 minutes of this video, personal and private. But let's do, go into some theology for a second. Let's assume for the sake of argument that you received this, maybe another objection, God gave this to you before she died. Well, then you have a, kind of a serious theological problem. You see, either God's too stupid to recognize she's already going to die, maybe doesn't know she actually has cancer and is going to die. I don't know. Doesn't make much sense, though. God gives you a personal prophecy about her healing, knowing full well she's going to die anyway of cancer. No, the logical conclusion is one of two things. Number one, God's a moron. That one doesn't fly. Okay? Number two, Pastor Dana's a liar. She doesn't know my grandmother. Now, my grandmother in the last days did contact her ministry. She saw her on TV in desperation, dying of cancer. Uh, so, the prophecy of my, you know, and the most of this was monetary in general anyway. But, Pastor Dana knew full well what she was doing here. Like a parasite, uh, like a supervillain parasite out of a comic book, she thrives off of the pain and suffering of others in order to get what she wants. As I said, my grandmother was already dead, dying of cancer. She had passed away of cancer. She had breast cancer. Skin eaten off of her body. Tumors all over her. I found the PET scans the other day while looking for some papers that I had misplaced that I needed. You could see them. Tumors lit up like a Christmas tree. And the, it was basically in the final... About, 10 months, I guess, before she died. She suffered. She suffered terribly. I was the one who heard her screaming all night. I was the one who couldn't do anything about it. The painkillers didn't work. Nothing worked. All I could do was hear her scream. And in her final days in hospice, even a couple of the nurses who had been nurses for 20 or 30 years had never heard anything or seen anything like it. And you prey upon that for money.
received this letter received this letter a few weeks after she my grandmother had died actually I had eaten at Sonny's had some barbecue for those of you who don't know what it is it's a barbecue place here in the south um, pretty good too and I remember reading it a bit stunned at what I had read and I'm not someone who cusses just not I did it a lot when I was younger thought it was cool till I realized that by and large it's just something ignorant people do who can't communicate very effectively my opinion anyway so I stopped every now and then something comes out of my mouth and usually when it does quite often it's just but I remember reading that letter for the first time and I was driving down Lane Avenue and all I could think about and I said if this kind of thing offends you forgive me um, but I'm putting it in here just for emphasis I guess I'm not someone who cusses um, I'm just not I think there are better ways to communicate but I was alone in the car and the, I don't know after reading the letter and thinking about it and all those emotions so raw about the death of a loved one who was very dear to me the only thing that could come out of my mouth was what a worthless pile of shit I said forgive me for using that I just don't know what our term to use what kind of human being does this? Why would you do it? For money? Huh? Money's that important to you? Even after all that, I said, this is her letter. In her envelope. You know? can't believe it someone would actually do this but hopefully she sees the video hopefully she repents and hopefully she messages me and does repent and I would forgive her I'm not someone who holds a grudge yeah I'm a bit pissed I still hadn't gotten over what I saw for those who had a family with breast cancer and have seen that terrible disease personally and up front you know what I'm talking about and nothing like it in the world reading about it or something like that is one thing seeing it up close is another she had had it for about 20-25 years and didn't tell a soul until she could no longer hide it anymore and about the last year was just plain suffering it wouldn't end like I said, I was the one who listened to all those screams every night. Quite often, she would grasp at straws for a miracle. This woman comes along, claims inspired revelation. I'm just happy this did. My grandmother had passed before she actually got this. God was merciful in taking with her. Taking her. I realize this video is a bit long. There are two more coming. Um, I said uh, I'd been in contact with some news organizations in Tampa about this because her address comes from Tampa, Florida. I don't know if it's still valid. I assume it is because I had just got another one a few days ago. Um, P.O. Box 48349, Tampa, Florida, 33646. But I think she's based in Brooklyn, is what um, one of the news organizations told me. I'd been contacted with a few of them. They'd been investigating her. They just couldn't really find a story concrete enough to get her. Anyway, I have a few more coming. Two more letters. Maybe I can, some way, by some miracle expose this woman before she becomes popular because she's charismatic she's pretty and before long she'll be the next Paula White although I, Paula White even doesn't stoop this low 
Take care.